I got bamboozled there a little bit. Laughs and analysis. <laughs> 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 All right. So, again, I asked the question, I answered it as well. The Faramis will protect the carry. And laning wise, this asks a very Magic interesting question. Oh, how how, how did we open? miss that? I missed it as well. We overthought it. We read oh, between the lines. Goodness, right. And we missed the obvious. There's that white haired little boy. Still a good pick. Again. Yeah, it is. I kind of get used to it getting banned out on its first phase. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, well, Blacks International, they're playing to their comforts, which is explained by the lower numbers on their lineup rating and their counter index. If anything, they get countered clean by Falcons AP Brent. It does feel like it. Uh, overall, the team fighting for Falcons AP Brent is through the roof, especially with the Fire Mist Netherrealm. So, the carry can just stay close to get out. Kacha, he should be fine as well. Stay close a few. And it's going to be tricky for Blacklist to eke one out here, unless they really take full control of the map. Key battle spells on these heroes. Take note, ladies and gentlemen, as we throw into the bout, it's Ingan and Naisu calling the action. And thank you so much. Rockheart Leo, break it down. Laughing in analysis. Us two here Welcome on the desk. Sometimes Legends. you just got to go with what works. Welcome to the game number one. First match of the day here, playoffs day number two. FCAP versus Blacklist International. What we saw yesterday, man, very impressive from Blacklist. I think a lot, again, a lot of people, if you guys missed it, yep. they performed out of their minds. Ingon, how are we feeling about the lineups here? You know, uh, I gotta agree with the panel again. It's hard to execute what Blacklist is up to, especially when uh, Super Marco the Bulletproof. You all know in terms of KDA, Super Marco's up to par when it comes to KDA with Haji, because He's bulletproof, but at the same time, he can dish out the damage. But Lord James going right after Flap DZ early on, forcing Blacklist to engage there. They oh. want to go for an early kill as Ogan trying to protect Flap DZ with a revitalized, though they might bring him down. He has to flicker Ooh. out, and Lord James' aggression will pay off. They will get the first blood. Already, you know? <laughs> hey, some people said, you know, oh, hold on, I think they're still engaging, Perks. Okay, they want to go for the counter attack. Here comes the Shadow Stampede for El Capitan Few, but it's not going to be enough, though, as Kyle Kizzi has to walk away, and Lord Chaim playing out of his mind already. A double kill oh. early on, make it three, as MP the King picks up the kill. Man, this is a whole lot happening here under the two minute mark right now. I mean, we're talking about a good respective lead early game leading into that first objective in just a bit here. And with those kills, two being on Lord JM, that's great for the lane matchup. You know, this is an Arlot pick. Uh, he just gets that level four, and he's got a nice lead against Flap TZ. So this makes things really, I guess, comfortable for Blacklist in the early portion of the game. We'll see if FCAP actually wants to respond to this and how they do that. But, you know, this this team fighting, the, the skirmish is already happening, are really favoring Blacklist here. And Imagine the first turtle just spawned. Already three kills for Blacklist. 1.3k gold lead. A lot has happened. Yeah. So for sure, this game will be action-packed as four agents are uh, securing here the turtle. Flap TZ and Ogre just trying to survey the scene, trying to disrupt Blacklist as they will secure an uncontested turtle. The other upside of this lineup from Blacklist International is just the fact that, you know, you have this Lo Yi here. Haji's running the Warcry Emblem, and that's why also those early skirmishes, you know, when he was able to get the, the interactions off, like that extra damage does play a part, and it's hard to fight those early fights with a Lo Yi across from you. Uh, now, later on, once those diversion plays come in handy, you know, that's where you really kind of keep FCAP wondering, like, where are we going to come through from that diversion play? Yeah. It's and it's tough to deal with. Look at that early damage already. Yeah, it's really going to boil down to the execution of our mid laners. Haji and a few, they have at least the most important ultimates for their respective teams. Few with another um, Haji with a diversion. And we've seen them. Wait a minute. Okay, they want to go for more Blacklist, forcing Ogwit to cast that AOG. And going back to my point, remember the time when Haji and MP the King paired up the Luyi with the Hayabusa, and they were just going crazy yeah. with the macro. That's when Blacklist International's uh, momentum started. Back in the regular season, right? Back in the yeah. regular season, it, It's yeah. funny because like a lot of people, when they were watching Blacklist International through the regular season, I think a lot of people had a lot of things to say about them. A and, lot. You know, because <laughs> there was a time, too, with Blacklist International in regular season where they were trying different, like, lineups, like, lineup iterations, and then they eventually found the best. Here's a diversion, though. Oh, going to make sure Woo! Super Marco doesn't have a good time here, even forcing out this flicker. But in the end, we'll bring him down. So that was a way worth it trade for Blacklist, a diversion for the life of Super Marco.
Yep, that's what I was talking about, man. The diversion plays are going to be pretty uh, an obstacle for FCAP to overcome. Now, with the lineup that they have here, too, they're really hoping that, you know, late game uh, is where they can shine and they can utilize, especially the carry pick, you know, with Super Marco, even though he's already gotten taken down. Yeah. That pressure is going to be continuous there, though. So for FCAP, they've got to be able to kind of protect Super Marco, allow the late game to happen because, hang on, the way things are going right now, like, I don't know if FCAP's going to get there. This second turtle for the taking, too, and yeah. Blacklist might either look for a pickoff or just start it up. Because ideally, the plan for Falcon's AP Bryn is, of course, late game insurance Super Marco with the carry. But Kyle TZ was supposed to be dominating early game with the Suyu pick. And so far, we've seen Suyu dominate early games. We've seen it with Andoryu. We've seen it with Carl TZ. So far, not a good start for Falcon's AP Bryn because of the... Uh, unexpected aggression Blacklist is showing as MP the King and the rest of Blacklist works on Flap Easy and Owen once again as they will bring him down. Flap Easy has to go with the split split. A perks pops his revitalize. Okay, now Flap Easy still working on Lord JM. Perks goes in with a glorious pathway with MP the King as well. Oh. Flap Easy quite tanky, but will he be able to sustain it? Here comes the Nether Realm, but they're just gonna break it right <laughs> away, bringing down two. MP is still alive. Few is the next target, and look at Lord JM. 5-0-2! Man! Uh, it, it sucks that the Alamat Awards just ended because this guy, one of the most improved players for the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, th that's a good point because a lot of people are talking smack on Lord JM a lot. through the regular season. But man, we're going to look at the replay here. He's trying to make a play in mid. I don't think that's going to result in much. But looking at this replay to us, brought to us by Infinix, this was a great final slash, able to find multiple members after the Nether Realm was even used. And then they go in, continue to collapse in. So just a huge lead right now for Blacklist. And a lot of this early on snowballed already into this point of the game, you know, that mid game where you're really just seeing how strong the fighting composition is. And the great thing about this for MP the King especially is this makes your job as a Ling so much easier like yeah. you can just do what you need to roam around the map focus on you know these objectives if you need to but ultimately the power spike right now for blacklist international is just so massive that fcap is going to have to really like slow things down and by slow things down i mean just not die you know like they don't want to go into a fight because they're going to be outgunned and outmaneuvered right now Look and ohab hasn't even really had to be part of these fights, obviously. Yeah, he's just literally going on the laning phase with Super Marco, having his own uh, mini game up top. And Blacklist, uh, what do you expect? No one could have predicted this. An 8 0 start coming into game number one up against Falcons AP Brand, the reigning defending world champions back in M5. 5.4k gold lead already. And I do agree with your point. MP the King, right? Okay, they're going to send out someone there. It's going to be Lord JM, the diversion, and they're just going to wait, but. I think oh. they're going to spot out Oakwin. Are they going to be able in. to burst him down though? Four members of the bees are here. Perks might be in trouble. The Shadow Staff feed will catch him. Flap TZ goes in as well. And the class will stop there. And okay, going back to MP the King. He's having such a good time because during the regular season, we would always see MP the King struggling because uh, uh, enemies would tend to invade his purple buff. But this time, 3 0 3 start. Not even minding whatever clash is happening right now, just focusing on the macro yep. for MP the King. And that's that's what that's what I'm saying. Like they're just gonna have kind of an easy time right now. Third turtle, I would be surprised if FCAP really wants to press into this and contest it. It looks like you know they're kind of getting angled for this. And we'll see if they actually do it, but it looks like not. Three for three now on the turtles, as it should. Again, FCAP really just needs to get to the late game here. They're I think we have to talk about how can they get oh, to this oh. game? Oh, hold on. Okay, okay, they okay. Them? Oh, they're this place again. I think Ogwen knows. Ogwen has to know. He spotted that bush earlier, but oh man, if he walks into that. Okay. He still has the AOG. He still can't escape here. But he's oh. getting bursted down, and Perks will pick up the kill. A fast burst, a fast rotation, fast play for Blacklist. And MP the King works on Kyle TZ. He's going to oh. get stunned, though. Templars of Blade will be casted. He has to walk away because of the tower damage. Kyle TZ pops his third skill. He's chasing after him. Super Marco as well. But MP the King will remain alive. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Wait, go to the bottom lane, please. Get to see. Okay. He, he got out. He got out. MP the King got MP's out. He's fine. Blacklist goes and swings it forward, gets a turret up top. Tier two now down there. Just Oheb having the gold lane experience, pretty much doing what he wants to do. Farms up. He hasn't 
really even shown just yet, but look at this. He's already got the Feather of Heaven Starlium Scythe locked in, working next to on the third item. Most likely Holy Crystal. He's got a little defense, defense physically. Yeah, hold on, mid lane. Okay. okay, we're gonna watch for Lord J. Oh. Okay, Vital Slash goes in as well as the Glorious Pathway. Netherrealm will be casted, but look at the damage coming in from Blacklist. They're gonna bring down wow. two. They don't have minions though, so they have to wait for it before they take down the mid lane turret and Lord JM again. Literally playing out of his mind, a 505 KDA. He's only, he's not part of just one kill all throughout Blacklist initiation. This is just nearly for, for Blacklist in game one, this is basically a perfect game for them. You know, they, there's been no like window for F Cap really to respond. Now you can see, I was just saying that he was going to pick up the Holy Crystal. He gets it at almost or, or under the 10 minute mark. You know, with Oheb getting those last two kills, this is a great moment for them to to get this Lord and possibly get mul you know multiple base turrets down. Because I just think if F Cap even tries to defend with this lineup, they've got a Nether Realm, but it's going to be worked on so quickly because of the economic advantage and items and power that Blacklist has. So this is a free Lord for them. F Cap will have to pull something through to get an amazing defense, but it's going to be so difficult. Kyle Teasy. Picking up a Sky Piercer here too. Okay. Yeah, very, very interesting, right? They don't have any kills on the board. He picks up a Sky Piercer, wants to just get one of the items that he can, but they're gonna try to hold this down. Lord JM as tanky as can be on this R lot, now picking up Radiant Armor. But he's been pumping out the damage too, and that final slash, especially when the Nether Realm is popped, has been a crutch for F Cap to deal with. So right now they try to hold down these turrets. They're going to have to wait for this Lord to march oh. in. Diversion oh. again, where they oh, go. Oh, they're going to catch Kyle oh. Teasy! <laughs> Instantaneously bursts him down! The timing. Haji, Haji instincts ever since day number one has been phenomenal. We're going to forget what he did game three against Omega. Casting Aurora. a skill with the Aurora onto that brush. That's why they found out where the diversion was and eventually swept Omega, and now the Lord is marching in, Lord JM catches three as the Lord is still there, they're gonna bring wow. down two, next one flap, Ogwin uh, manages to escape from the AOG, but they have to defend the push, cause five members of the agents are here with the Lord, might be able to take game one as they bring down Marco, Kyle CZ alone, and Blacklist will win game one. And ladies and gentlemen, this is playoffs black. That was about as the best of a game you could get with the lineup that they had, the way they moved, the way they showed up as a team here. Just an absolute stomp in game one. The legacy of Blacklist continues to write some more memories as they take a, a phenomenal game one against the defending champions of M5. Man, oh man, let's throw it over to the panel here to see what they have to say about game one. Something about Blacklist in the Season 14 playoffs makes everyone look inadequate. I'm going to use that word. I am, uh, I'm I'm going to use the word dumbfounded. I think people are becoming dumbfounded here. That's, that's one way to put it. Right? The teams are fighting them like, wait, what do I do? Uh, what? what? <laughs> Congratulations to our MVP, Lord JM. Minute negative one. He was on fire and he started strong.